got something happening on the other side of the planet, going on for several days, violent, unrelenting, but here at home in Canada, in at least two major cities, mm -hmm. we've got people on the streets as well. Why are people out here? So I was involved in a protest earlier today. I had a small role in organizing it. A lot of former political prisoners organized it. And our message was, you know, we stand in solidarity with the people that are protesting. Um, we want to echo their message. We want to amplify their voice. And we also want to let our government officials here in Canada know um, that we ought to stand with the protesters um, that are fighting so bravely in the streets of Iran. So part of it has to do with the solidarity with friends and family and just generally activists in Iran, but also sending a message to our federal government. Mm -hmm. Now, our government has been slow to respond to this. I want to bring up Christia Freeland's statement as Minister of Foreign Affairs, if we could bring that up. Now, this is part of what she released a few days ago. Canada is encouraged to see the Iranian people exercising their basic right to protest peacefully. We call on the Iranian authority, she goes on to say, to uphold and respect democratic human rights. Now, that statement took several days to come out. We have not heard from the Prime Minister, and you've actually called this government out in an article you wrote for the National Post. We just titled, If Canada is back, like Trudeau says, we should be supporting Iran's protesters. Mm -hmm. Why do you think this government isn't responding the way you and so many Iranian Canadians mm -hmm. would like them to? I mean, I, in, in my piece for the National Post, I speculate that I think the Prime Minister um, is very, very committed to um, a campaign promise that he made, which is to re-engage with the Iranian government. He wants to reverse um, Stephen Harper's decision to close the embassy. This happened in 2012, I believe. Um, and um, so for that reason, I, I think he believes that if he speaks out, that may jeopardize his ability to deliver on that promise. And what I say in that piece, and it's, it's my belief, and I think a lot of people in our community share that belief, um, is that, you know, th there's... You know, this, the significant cost that he's now bearing, the, the cost of, um, you know, standing by silently and allowing um, the, the violent attacks on political pris on, on, on protesters to happen and for political prisoners um, to, you know, languish in, in Iranian prisons, that's too high a cost. And I think the prime minister really ought to uh, think about why he's staying silent and perhaps um, speak more forcefully on this. What do you say to those who would argue, well, this is a Western government. We've seen when Western governments get involved in Middle East politics that oftentimes it becomes a mess. Maybe it's best for Canada to stay out of it and let Iranians sort this out for themselves. Well, I think Iranians, um, you know, we're not asking for the Canadian government, the U.S. government, any Western government to dictate anything for Iranian people. All we're saying is that Prime Minister Trudeau or other Western leaders ought to simply echo what the uh, protesters on the streets are saying. You know, the protesters are not saying, you know, we want... Um, to work with this faction of the Iranian government, that faction. They're saying, we want democracy, we want human rights, we want to do away with the theocracy uh, that's been oppressing us for 40 years. And all we're asking is for Western governments to just echo that um, sentiment. Okay. Now, it, within this liberal government, there was another MP that spoke out. And this is a man who was born in Iran. We're talking about the MP from uh, Richmond Hill, Majid Johari. And so this is part of the tweet that he issued that is getting a lot of feedback. As our government is closely monitoring the ongoing protests in Iran, it is my sincere hope that the brave nation of Iran have the opportunity to air their legitimate financial, social, and political concerns. Then it goes on to say, with the support of their elected government in a secure environment and without fear of persecution, financial, social, and political concerns. Now, on the offset, that seems supportive, but it has gotten a lot of criticism. Why do you think that is? So I'm, I'm about to offer you um, a criticism of that tweet, but okay. I, I should start with a disclosure. So yes. the MP in, in question was my opponent um, for the Liberal nomination, and he defeated me, and he went on to win the seat. So any criticism that I offer, your viewers should sort of, you know, read that with, um, with that in mind. Um, but I think that tweet... Um, and it's not just me, again, many people in our community feel that tweet, um, really is, is morally very questionable. The idea that somehow the Iranian people that, are, that have been oppressed for 40 years, that have been attacked, that are currently being attacked on the streets, should somehow sit down with this government. And he refers to it as an elected government, mm -hmm. which is a very questionable um, term to apply to a, to a government that's not really elected in any free or fair election. The idea that, that somehow the victims would sit down with this government and somehow negotiate a solution um, when the government has been oppressing them for four decades mm -hmm. is uh, ludicrous and morally very questionable. At the UN, we saw a representative from uh, the Iranian regime address Nikki Haley, the UN ambassador um, from the United States. And when she was saying that nations should come out and support the people of Iran, the Iranian representative turned around and said, this is what often happens in every country. People have grievances against the state, and so they come out and protest. Iran is no different. Mm -hmm. So again, what makes what's happening on the ground in Iran different? 
so first of all, the Iranian people are not protesting some small policy matter. They're out in the streets chanting, you know, death to the dictator, you know, down with the Islamic Republic. So they're, they want a fundamental change of regime. Um, secondly, this is not just something that happened, in, you know, that started in the past week. This, as I've mentioned, has been going on for 40 years. The Iranian regime has been committing crimes against humanity. It's killed. It's, you know, tortured and raped and um, imprisoned. And, uh, you know, that, that's not normal. That's not what every state does. And I think what Iranian people want, the ones that are out in the street protesting right now, is that they want to be a normal democratic state like any other. And they feel that um, this uh, religious government that's been ruling them for the past four decades is standing in the way of that. If you could have it your way, if you and those who think like you could change Iran tonight, what would Iran look like tomorrow? Um, I think Iran would become a democratic state, one that um, respects the rights of women, one that respects the rights of religious minorities, and one that doesn't have political prisoners. And unfortunately, we're very far from all of that today. Okay. Kaveh, I want to thank you for coming in. My pleasure.